social media empire of over three million, a revolutionary approach to menopause care through the pause life and an upcoming book, The New Menopause, set to redefine the conversation. She's here to share her invaluable insights on embracing menopause with confidence and answering my most burning question. So please welcome Dr. Mary Claire Haver. <laughs> Dr. Haver, so many fans here and we're so happy to have you with us uh, on the show today we got a lot to talk about and only a little bit of time so let's dive right in let's say a woman starts seeing those early signs of perimenopause what is the number one thing she needs to do first educate herself um, there is a lack of education awareness awareness and knowledge of perimenopause the symptoms when it begins amongst healthcare professionals as well as all the regular people out there. Most physicians are gonna struggle to help you because they weren't taught or trained. So it's important to go in with some baseline information, also know what your treatment options are so you can have a discussion with your healthcare provider. So we all have a lot of reading to do on our own and also sussing through all the information out there because there's a lot. What, what would you suggest we do to make sure that we're getting our info from a reputable source? So there is something called the Menopause Society in North America, so both for the U.S. and Canada, and they have tons of excellent information for lay people and for healthcare providers on their website. It's menopause.org if you want to look it up, just to get a baseline of how to educate yourself about the process. Okay, that's helpful. Now, once you posted all of the supplements and the medications that you recommend and that you actually take during perimenopause, mm -hmm. so can you walk us through your go-to regimen? Sure, so I am fully postmenopausal. I went through menopause, I think at around 48. My perimenopause was years before that. So currently I am on systemic estrogen therapy in the form of a patch. I also take nightly progesterone as I do have a uterus, so I must take it. It's very helpful for my sleep. I'm also on testosterone and local estrogen therapy for my face and for my other areas as well. Right. <laughs> wink, wink. I get that. You know what? I tried the patch to begin with when I started hormone therapy. That thing would not stay anywhere I stuck it. I'd, like I did it the abdomen. I did it on the butt. I did it everywhere. So I had to move back to the pill. Does it matter uh, what you like, which way you take in your hormones, do you think? There's some people have difficulty with the patch sticking or with transdermal options absorbing. So oral is a really good option for them. If you have a family history or a personal history of blood clots or a clotting disorder, you wanna really try for a transdermal option because we bypass the liver that way, which is where we can see a slight, very slight uptick in our clotting factors with the oral estrogen. And transdermal would be anything that's like on the skin, right? On through the skin, correct. Through the skin. Okay, how do we know if hormones are the right answer for us? And if they're not, what else exists as treatment for menopause? So certainly if you're having the classical symptoms of menopause, that being vasomotor symptoms like hot flushes, night sweats, and palpitations, we can easily get rid of those symptoms with hormone therapy. But there's also protective benefits of hormone therapy that a lot of people don't realize. It's very protective of our bones for osteoporosis. It's protective of our cardiovascular system. If you start early enough for decreasing the rate of heart attacks and death from heart attacks, it's also neuroprotective, decreasing rate, rates of dementia, again, if started early enough in the window of opportunity. Okay, I wanna go back to the top when you said that we need to start looking for our own info and doing our own research and go to our physician uh, to figure out what we need to do. If we go to a physician, and I hear this from viewers all the time, and you tell them about their, your symptoms and they are not taking them seriously, what mm -hmm. is your next line of defense? Because we can only do sure. so much in terms of advocating for ourselves. Like, what do we do next? Exactly. You can go to our website at The Pause Life and look for a testimonial. I've collected hundreds of testimonials from my followers who had great menopause experiences with their clinicians, and we've compiled those for you. So that's at pauselife.com under recommended physicians. Also, the Menopause Society has a list of, and you want certified physicians on their website. Okay, so you just got to keep shopping around for another physician. Yes. Now, 
Part of the reason why a lot of women, and even now when I mention hormone uh, therapy, people are like, but what about cancer? There was a mm -hmm. study that was done um, that has since been debunked. Can you tell us why we should not be as concerned about cancer um, if we decide to, to go the hormonal route? So the, the vast majority of the claims that were originally made by that study, which was published in 2002, and really was like a bomb went off in the world of menopause care. 80% of women immediately threw their prescriptions in the, in the trash can, and there was almost no further prescribing going on. But that, that was the number one medical news story of, 20, of 2002. All the redactions, all of the walk back, all of the, hey, we were wrong, we didn't look at the data correctly, when we reanalyzed it, it looks like there was not an increased risk of cancer, has not been as widely publicized as that initial study. And it takes about 17 years from a study to get into clinical practice. And so we're just playing catch up now. Yeah, they say that a lie goes around the world uh, like, you know, several times before the truth has even put its boots on. So we're all living in the lie um, and it's it's hard to get past that. But you are doing that diligently on your social media like you were out there putting information out consistently. And I have to ask you this. How is that for you? Like, is that is that taxing for you to be such a public facing a face of menopause and have to deal with all of these detractors like people are constantly trying to tear down your information in your studies like how do you handle all that it's some days are better than others um, but I get so many beautiful notes DMs handwritten messages from followers who have told me that what I have said what information I provided what studies I told them to print out and take to their doctor's office have worked and I've changed their lives and they've gotten their lives back. They've set themselves on a course to have a healthy and active menopause instead of worries of osteoporosis, frailty or dementia. And that is worth all the detractors, all the naysayers and all the negativity to me. I need to talk about your new book. Like, let's talk about this <laughs> book. When's it coming out and what are we gonna learn from it? April 30th. You know, I, I get so many questions I field every day on menopause. What is it about? What does it mean? How do we how do we approach this time of our lives in the healthiest way possible? And that's what the book is about. The history of menopause, why we aren't educating providers, what we need to do to stand up for ourselves and advocate for ourselves. Great resources for you. Not only hormone therapy, but all of the possible options, including supplements, as well as non-hormonal pharmacology. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Dr. Haver. We so appreciate you taking the time. Take care. Thank you.